Hello everyone, welcome back. It's episode 4 of the Technician's Guide to Terraria's Expert Mode Bosses. I'm Enigmius and today we're fighting the twins. The first of three mechanical boss encounters that we'll be doing and then at some point we'll be fighting all three encounters at the same time. Total of four bosses. The twins is two plus a worm and a big guy with too many arms. It's raining, it's Halloween, we've got uh, goldfish walking around. As in the last episode, the bunnies are dressed up like slimes and the slimes are dressed up like bunnies. It's just, it's madness here for Halloween, but that's okay. We're talking about how we're going to defeat the twins. We're going to start with a bit of a gear uh, preview, or review, depending on what you're looking at. Then we're going to look at the <laughs> spot that we made to fight them. And then we're going to look at the fight itself. So first thing we're going to do, I don't want to spend a ton of time, is we're going to take a look at the weapons uh, that we'll be using for the encounter. But first, I just have to show off my latest acquisition. I worked very hard for this. This is my guitar. <laughs> it's, it's a hammer and an axe. It's the axe. And it works really well on goldfish. <laughs> it's got to be said. All right, weapons. First thing we're going to be looking at, and this is uh, very important to this encounter, is of the three things we're going to be looking at weapons-wise, this is the most important. This is a portal gun. This is a very end-game item you get from the Moon Lord. Uh, I'm pretty sure he, I'm pretty, his, th his deal is he drops a portal gun every time you kill him, and I've sold a lot of these portal guns, believe me. It works just the way you would expect a portal gun to work if you're familiar with Portal, Portal 2, any game that's ever incorporated a portal gun as a nod to either of those games. You equip it as a weapon, you fire with the left mouse button, it makes a colored portal, you fire with the right mouse button, it makes a portal of a different color, and then you go into one portal, you come out the other. You go into one, you come out the other, back and forth like this. You can see this is pretty much exactly how we're going to be set up in the arena. This allows us to move, obviously, side to side very quickly. You can put these portals on walls, you can put them on ceilings. As long as you've got a space wide enough to accept them, you can place them very very handy the, the whole idea here is we're moving around very quickly we're moving around a lot constantly very quickly and without having to think too much about it it's just happening now this frees us up to make other strategic decisions as we're fighting the boss and protecting us all the same so very important this portal gun thing I've been wanting to incorporate it into a boss fight for some time and I'm sure this won't be the only uh, boss fight that we'll be using it for just because it's very handy. I think it also might work on monsters as well But we'll find out if we leave the portals long enough Someone's bound to come along and pick a fight. They can't win So that's the first weapon and the other weapon That's very important is a solar eruption and this is again a very late end game kind of weapon It's made with materials you only get from the solar event leading up to the spawn of the moon lord so it's not like something you make your first time through the game and then use it a lot. You make it and then you kill one more boss and the game is over. It's kind of the way it works. Uh, so the key thing about this is it's got some range to it. You can see it has a, a certain distance that it extends. It always extends that distance and then it retracts. And if you hold down the button, you get what you're looking at here. It just goes back and forth automatically on its own. You can move it around and here you're seeing sort of the key feature is that it can travel through blocks. It's not impeded by blocks in any way. So if you've got a situation where a boss or an um, enemy is using attacks that can't go through blocks and you've got this, it means you can put a barrier between you and them and kill them safely through that barrier with this guy. So that's a very important piece of equipment for us to have is the ability to go through blocks. You'll see that when we get to the arena and how we've set it up to protect ourselves and the last option, and this is one, even if you're not familiar with it directly yourself, uh, if you read the wiki, a lot of boss uh, strategies will tell you that this is an item that makes the boss fight much, much easier. These are vampire knives. You can see you can shoot them around. Uh, they work as well on goldfish in terms of killing as the axe, but they don't fling them nearly so far. So obviously not as good as the axe for killing goldfish. The key thing with these is that they'd have a lifesteal effect. So when you damage an enemy, you get some health back. And the more times uh, you hit an enemy, the more health you get back. So you can see we've got a bit of a spread of fires. It looks to be five-ish knives at a time. If you hit an enemy with all five knives, and you're hitting with volley after volley after volley, you can regenerate a lot of health very quickly. So it makes the, the whole idea of boss fights much easier. I see you, goldfish. 
There we go. <laughs> He's dealt with. Just because one of the most difficult things in the game is managing health regen in the middle of a fight. There's all kinds of different strategies, different things you can use. You can use campfires and lanterns, and you'll see we've got some heart statues in the arena. And there's, It's not like it's impossible. This just makes it a hell of a lot easier. So that's the third item that we'll be bringing into this fight for the twins. Now we're going to head up and we're going to take a look at the arena that we made just for this fight. All right, now I'll draw your attention to the mini-map in the top right corner so that you can get the big picture of this arena that I made specifically to fight the twins. It wasn't something that came to me right away. It was like this evolution of ideas. First, I wanted an oval arena, and then my idea for the oval arena didn't look like it was going to work out, so it kind of shifted to a different idea for the oval arena. And then I realized that we were fighting eyes, and we were so close to an eye shape. What if we just kind of did a little bit of tweaking and turned it into a giant eye? And then we finished it off with the functional elements that should allow us uh, a fairly straightforward victory. Not necessarily a fast one, but not a particularly complicated one. So let's kind of go around and take a look. The outside is all blocks that you can't pass through. You can't, uh, I mean, you can't go that way. So we have to have an opening, and I chose to put the opening in the top. Because for the most part, it's the demon eyes that would get in here, and they would get in from the bottom, and I didn't want that to happen so that... We, there's no such thing as an impregnable uh, structure when you've got an open spot. So we just did the best we can with what we've got. <laughs> it just dies and rolls down the outside of the eye. So this iris here that you see is solid. It's it's You wouldn't necessarily know from looking at it the way it's lit up, but it is actually solid blocks. Now the twins can move through solid blocks, but they can't... Sh the, the one that shoots can't shoot through solid blocks. One breathes fire and one shoots. The fire breather, he, he usually gets in close before he breathes anyways, but the shooting guy can't shoot through this, so it's a good way to cut down on the amount of incoming damage. These guys just, they don't get it. I don't, I don't want them in here. Uh, and then you've got over here, another kind of interesting thing worth noting is this corner is all solid as well. It's purely aesthetic. It doesn't serve a function other than kind of mimicking that spot in your eye where the tears accumulate while you're sleeping and they harden and then you gotta scoop them out in the morning. It's, that's kind of the, that thing there. Now the lighting on this and this is done by Gemspark walls. You put them similar to how we've got the marble walls here doing kind of the, the white dirty eye thing. The, the Gemspark walls make things so that when they're solid they glow if you have a solid construction like this, the light can't penetrate to the inside, so you end up with just like a big shadowed area, and it would have been even worse over here. So by using the gem spark walls, not only does it illuminate rather interestingly, but it also makes it so that you can see what's going on before it all just turns into a big blobby shadow. And then lastly, we've got the veins. I would have liked if they were red and glowing. I had to kind of make a decision, do I want red or do I want lit? And I chose Lit because it just kind of has a better look to it. It still looks kind of bloodshot up here in the mini-map. It's kind of orange here in the actual arena itself, but it's not that bad. So we've got a couple of platforms that might just happen to be wide enough for a portal. One here and one here. And if we look at the wiring, we've got uh, a one-second timer wired to two heart statues here, two heart statues here so that they spawn hearts, or in this case, because it's Halloween, they spawn candy apples. And we can use those basically as we're passing between the two different portals. Uh, on our way by, we might grab a couple of them from time to time, help us boost our health a little bit, or so I thought. It didn't really work out quite as well as I had hoped because we were moving too fast and it wasn't slow enough to actually pull the candy apples in towards us. Regardless, this is the arena that I made specifically for the twins fight and now we just have to do the fight itself. Now I skipped ahead a bit, just got set up the basics, placed the portals, uh, got moving between the two. We've got a little wraith kind of flying around wanting to get in the way as we're getting set up for this. Now the interesting thing about this is when we're moving in the portals like this, the character stays in the exact same spot on the screen. It makes it interesting for selecting things from your inventory and using them, for example, because it's as though you're standing still. Now you can see the twins, there's two eyes, uh, and they're, they're pretty happy to move back and forth 
Uh, they are tethered, but the tether extends pretty much as far as they want it to. <laughs> I don't know necessarily uh, what it's there for. One shoots lasers, the other shoots fire. And that's kind of the rule. Um, one likes to charge you, that's the same as the, that's the one that shoots the fire. And it's just a case of staying moving. And you can see I move in one portal and they kind of t change direction. They come after me and before they can reach me, I get to the other side. So we're uh, avoiding a lot of damage right now because if you're just trying to move around jumping around on platforms running around on the ground trying to avoid that charge and then the flame that comes after it and then the lasers and all that other stuff it can be a little bit difficult at times especially if you're uh, maybe not as well geared uh, as you could be for that spot in the game and even if you have good gear for that spot specifically in the game it's as much the strategy and the approach as anything else that determines whether or not you're going to be successful because you can't just face tank these guys. Uh, they will cause a lot of damage. Now, the, the fire spitting guy, he's just entered phase two and you see what he does. Not only did he uh, close his iris and open his mouth, instead of uh, like a single jet of flame, now he does like a fan of flames that covers quite a wide area. And this is really the first time since the fight started that I've been taking any damage. And the downside to the solar eruption, the weapon that I'm using right now, uh, that kind of offsets its ability to go through blocks, is that it's very slow to turn. Because it has that extension, it goes all the way out. There's no way to make it go halfway out or, you know, a third of the way out. It goes all the way out and comes all the way back. If you're trying to turn and change direction where you're flailing the damn thing, it's a little bit slow. So this part here, we're trying to kill the guy and it's it's going a little bit slower than I might like. Now fortunately, we're still avoiding a ton of damage. Even though he, he charges more and he does that fan of flames that's uh, much harder to avoid. It's basically like a wall of flames. You can see every time he does it. Now he's dead. But it took a long time to get rid of him, which is kind of like, hmm, what are we going to do? And now I'm thinking, I'm, I've actually got time in the middle of the fight. This guy is shooting lasers at me. I'm like, do I want to, I, maybe I've, I've used a potion. I've got some potions. They're not on my hot bar, but that's okay. I'll just use them. And then I decided to switch over to the vampire knives. Uh, one, because I showed you guys that I had them and suggested that might be useful in the fight. And two, because I was missing a little bit of health. And I was, I was feeling okay with the solar eruption going away for a while. I didn't really feel like I needed to be using that one anymore. Uh, so I decided to give these a try because I've never actually used them in a boss fight of any kind. I went through the process of getting them, uh, which was not necessarily difficult, but it wasn't like a 10 minute process either. And now I, I finally get a chance to use them, which is kind of neat. So this guy is now in phase two. You can see his uh, iris has opened up and now he's extended his laser cannon. <laughs> Look at you. They're mechanical eyes. They're like bionic eyes. There's only uh, so much you can expect from them. Uh, but he's not faring too well against these daggers that were thrown at him. I, my eyes wouldn't fare too well against vampire daggers either. So it's one of those things. Those red lines that you're seeing is the health leech effect. Uh, pulling the health from him and uh, delivering a portion of it to me. And my health is basically pinned at 100% now and will remain that way for the rest of the fight. This guy's almost dead. Uh, and when he dies, he's going to drop the usual expert mode loot bag, which includes one of the wagon pieces. Each mechanical boss has one wagon piece that's guaranteed to drop when you kill them that uh, basically they combine together to make the fastest wagon in their uh, wagon minecart uh, in the game. And we'll be using that as part of a boss kill of some sort at some point as well, which could be kind of interesting and, and hopefully quite fun. But as far as this fight, it's basically done. It's all over but the crying for this guy. So the next episode, we're going to be doing something about the Destroyer of Worlds. You see, I just, we're good. We're, we're good for health. I'm just going to finish him off now. And he's dead. He's dead. We got him. So we're going to grab the loot. We're going to get ready for our fight with the Destroyer of Worlds, and that'll be the next episode. So if you want to be notified when I add that one, subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media. Leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.